Let me introduce my friend, Chris Sauer. She has a very, very interesting story about a journey around the world to talk about. She's Brazilian and lovely and the nicest person ever. And we met years ago. And the whole story now about what we want to talk about is the quest for beauty. She changed her life. You were doing some modeling and a bunch of other things before and became a documentary type movie producer on her own. And I remember her back then carrying around all this like camera equipment and her Range Rover. <laughs> in the back and going around trying to figure out how to get this done and how to make it happen with not much prior experience in it. So it was just amazing watching you do that. I wanted to talk to you about your journey in the quest for beauty, what you kind of found out, and also in this quest, how it changed you and how, how the hell did you become like a movie producer? So I want to go through all of that. It was one question. It was like 50 questions in one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but we'll, we'll go piece by piece. So the Quest for uh, Beauty movie, it's a documentary. Um, why did you want to even start this? Okay. Um, yeah, when did my journey start? So I was a model for like almost 20 years. And I think... No, I mean, I think I, I know it was a very heavy on like my self esteem and, you know, my, I know that today that I didn't have a lot of self love before. Um, and then, so I started the film after being physically abused by a former partner. And it was just, I think, a need to do something meaningful. And I didn't even know how meaningful that was going to be until like I started and until like I actually finished it because it really changed me because, you know, as a model, I had a very narrow idea of beauty. It's like, you know, as long as you're skinny, as long as your, you know, your skin is nice, your hair is shiny. Um, and, you know, there's nothing wrong about that. But I think if that's your only perception of beauty, I think that's very limited. So, um, so, so did you want to find out for yourself to, you know, did you want to change your own perception of beauty or, or did you already see something you just wanted to know more about and teach everybody about? I think first I wanted to educate myself. Well, I thought that I was going to teach the world about that, mm -hmm. <laughs> but first I needed to educate myself on that. So I started interviewing, you know, I wanted to get very different perspectives because it was kind of obvious, like to interview um, models to interview, you know, like just people in the business, the, the beauty business. And, and that's when I interview you, because I think that's also part of beauty, right? But then I also interview fashion um, philosophers. I have a mathematician. I have a blind woman. It's just like, just because someone cannot see with the physical eyes, it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that the person cannot see beauty or cannot experience beauty. Right. So, and that was very interesting. And that started like opening up my ideas. Like, wow, you know, physical beauty is one shade of beauty. And then what about all the other layers and all the other shades? And then just, you know, expanded my ideas so much. And then that, those interviews, they enriched me. And yeah, so that's all in the movie now. So, so who are the, the characters? Like, who are the people that you interviewed? Because I think that'll give everybody... Uh, a nice kind of idea of who you were even asking about beauty and where you learned this stuff from. I saw a lot of different people. I saw like a shaman looking guy. I saw, uh -huh. you know. Yeah. So I started by interviewing a yogi uh, and you, you were, go. you were the first one. You were the second one. Ah. actually. Yeah. There was a yogi and that was you. And I think, you know, I, because I had no experience in doing documentary whatsoever. And just like you said, it was like me with a backpack and I had like one person helping me out. And it's like, okay, once I have all that footage, I'm going to, you know, find someone. It was just like, I, I, I was so, I was really obsessed about the fact that I needed to do something. I wanted to have like a purpose for, you know, still being around. And, and then I was hoping that one person would lead me to the next. So it's not that I had like a whole plan. I didn't even know like, okay, like you need to do pre-production and then you go into production and all that. Like, I was like, let me just start doing this. And it was like really, it was something that the yogi said. I'm like, yeah, you know, I think it'd be cool to interview a plastic surgeon. 
And that's when I was, you know, talking to Shayla about, and it's like, mm-hmm. oh my God, I know the best guy. You got to meet him. And that's when she introduced us. And then we did the interview with you. And then it was something that you said. I'm like, oh, that would be cool to, you know, to talk to, you know, like, a, I think after you, who was it? And it was a philosopher mm-hmm. because you, you, you told me about like, the, all the, the handwork that used to do about, you know, pottery and, you know, the artist stuff. And it's like, hmm, you know, after rewatching our interviews, like, okay, that'd be cool to do a uh, philosopher. And then there was like this other lady that she's, um, she's a historian. And then, you know, and then um, I got interested in um, talking about art. And then mm-hmm. there was like this super cool painter Alex Katz I had Mm -hmm. been previously introduced to him in New York you know he painted me I'm like oh my god like let's you know I wanted to introduce Alex so then I introduced Alex and then I decided to go back um to the fashion world then I did a little bit and I don't want to give away the entire movie but (laughs) (laughs) well what else did you travel it looked looked like when you were doing it you were traveling everywhere yeah I traveled to 12 countries so you're all over the place, did, you know. Did in you every to, sense, all over the place. <laughs> yeah, Europe, Brazil, yeah, everywhere. How long did it take you to do this? To film, it took me almost a year. Yeah, I was traveling for a whole year. And then the production, post-production, all that stuff. Oh gosh, like we finished the film, we locked picture at the end of last year, so it took me a good five years. And before this, you had like zero, zero exposure or experience to filming a documentary. I mean, I had done a short documentary before, mm-hmm. but like I didn't have to do production. I didn't have to do a whole lot of other stuff. Yeah. And yeah, so this one was in the beginning, it was really an excuse for me to leave my house. Yeah. You know, and yeah. well, in the beginning, if you don't mind explaining, you're a bit of an emotional wreck from kind of what you were going through and then your car got robbed from what I remember your yeah yeah your your Range Rover got broken into and they took all the camera equipment you had which was very very expensive and really all you had to work with yeah so yeah so as I remember it was a very emotional process going through all that and you were still trying to figure out your your uh home life which was complicated Oh my God, it was, it was a mess. Yeah. And then the day that we had actually scheduled your interview for the day that my car got broken into. And it was very strange because my car was parked inside of my garage on the second floor. I gated, you know, and it's like, anyway, it got broken into. They stole all my equipment. Are you serious? And then so we had to reschedule, had to buy everything again. And then we rescheduled the interview. Yeah. So everything was on a delay, but you kept going. And then finally, yeah, I think I'm stubborn enough to keep on going. <laughs> yeah, so so everybody understands. So you you pretty much made yourself a, a producer. <laughs> you pretty much made yourself uh, an interviewer, a director. You just went through and learned it. And um, I haven't seen the whole movie. I've only seen clips that you send me, but it's very professionally done. It's everything like is pretty impressive and the people you interview are really uh, impressive people too like they're all they're all people you would want to learn from and listen to and what do you think you actually like learned about beauty in the end what what so what's your definition now do you have a definition of beauty or or have you said no there is no definition of beauty which way have you gone have you been able to better define it or are you more kind of uh loose with how you define it now um it's like a little bit of both but what I what I've learned is that it's something that we keep hearing all the time is like it starts within and you know beauty's in the eye of the beholder and all that. But then it's really like how you see things, you know, even like difficult situations. And we can use this, you know, the quarantine and the whole pandemic as a good example, like a you know what we all are living now. It's like how do you see this time? You know, Mm -hmm. you can see this as something like, wow, this is really incredible. Of course, like, it's very easy to say when you're not the one in the hospital or you don't have like a loved one going through that. But like, what is that teaching you? And that, you know, if you can see the beauty in that, that's going to overwrite the other side of it. Mm -hmm. So and that goes for everything in life. You can you can see like this, this difficulties or challenges as something like a stepping stone and then it just go a little up on the 
you know, the evolution ladder, or you can really, you know, be a victim of circumstances and things that happen in your yeah. life or choices yeah. that you make. So this isn't just physical beauty. It is all kinds yeah. of beauty, things that are beautiful to you. And you would define that as anything that kind of, I mean, do you have a definition for it? Is it, is it anything that gives you pleasure, anything that uh, makes you feel something that <laughs> reminds you? I think it's something that makes you feel something. And that that's why it's, it's a, it's very vague because that's going to depend on, mm -hmm. you know, who you're talking to, but it's really like how you feel about stuff and how you see things, yeah. you know, because you can see a little rock on the floor and go like, oh, wow, you know, that's a, a very interesting rock. Or like, you can go like, oh shit, you know, I just stumbled on this stupid rock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so it's and, really like a perception is more, it's like your perception. I think that is the most important thing. And then you have all the other shades. It's like you can have a beautiful equation. You can have a beautiful face. Mm -hmm. And that's going to depend on who's looking at it. And that's going to depend. It's like your taste and so many other things. Yeah. But ultimately, when you want to define it from a, from a higher level, from like in a more something that applies to more things, that's really going to be like really um, more about you know, a feeling, something, yeah, something that you cannot change, you know, yeah. because other stuff, it changes, it moves, you know, it's cultural, it's perception, it's taste. And I believe that beauty is one of those qualities that if it changes, then it's, it's questionable if it's beauty or not, like in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, and what do you think about like, uh, just for the extreme of people that even, myself to understand what beauty is when people are talking about i mean i think the definition is kind of all over the place but uh, and it doesn't need to have one the uh you, you have like a totally miserable person a totally hateful miserable sociopath who uh takes joy in making other people miserable <laughs> and for them uh realistically it's everything's negative mm -hmm. but they might somehow see beauty <laughs> in making other people miserable or they might enjoy it so um you know it, it, in those cases i i try to say okay well we all do have a completely different perception and it could be something beauty where it's always positive but you might completely disagree with somebody else's definition of beauty or, or what somebody else is you know what somebody else enjoys or sees as beautiful because we are so different all of us we have you know without the good in the world there's no bad in the world without the smart people without the dumb people there's no smart people right it's, it's always it's always going to exist like that um but if we're you know if we're all the same it's that's not well that's not the the pattern of our world so um you have beauty that some of us will never understand is what i'm trying to say with with people who, who just don't see things the way you could ever see them but that's really up to each one of us right yeah. we're gonna make it's a choice it's an everyday choice because you know, yeah, sometimes like you have days, it's like, okay, this is really shitty, you know, and that's okay too. And then when you stop and go like, okay, what can I learn from this? And then if you really take a step back and go like, oh, wow, you know, if it wasn't for this, I wouldn't have learned that. Mm -hmm. And then it changes your perspective. It's like, oh, wow, you know, actually that was a good thing that it didn't happen. Like a very easy example that I'm sure everyone is going to have, you know, is going to relate to and it's going to. Um, have an example. It's like you have a relationship, and then it's like, oh my god, you know, like this person is the one, and whoever this person is, and then it doesn't work. And it it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter how much you try, it doesn't matter anything. It's not gonna work. And then for the longest time, like you're like, oh, this person is such an asshole, like I can't believe it, da da da. And then like five years later or ten years later, you meet someone that's like really really special and then like you look back it's like wow you know i'm so glad it didn't happen actually i learned so much from that person that i can actually be you know a better version of myself for this relationship and this like a relationship is just the easiest um i guess example that from the top of my head i can give you and a lot of people can relate to this that so but that goes for so many other things you know, that initially we're like, oh, my God, you know, this person is a sociopath. And <laughs> it might be, you know, and too bad for that person if he or she doesn't realize it. But then 
later on, I'm like, wow, you know, I'm so glad that actually I met that one person because today I see, you know, I see and understand things that I didn't before. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it does help to kind of experience different people who are different than you. And then uh, you, you, you do see the world a different way. You understand the world different. Yeah. Uh, do you, your, do you, do you see yourself any differently now? Oh, absolutely. It's like night and day. Tell me what, tell me how, what are the, because it, it, it's interesting coming from a world where you are uh, more involved with the physical beauty. You are more involved in modeling and things like that. So, so how have you changed in terms of how you see the world in yourself? I think before, um, you know, I was actually seeing myself as just a commodity, you know, like, oh, you know, like you're pretty and then you're doing all this work and then, you know, you're booking all these jobs and then, you know, you're getting paid for it and people are paying you compliments and that was like all lovely, right? And then you start aging. And then I remember turning 30 and freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, the world's going to end tomorrow, you know, when I'm actually 30. And that was 10 years ago. I'm 40, I'm turning 40 this year. <laughs> And I could not be more happy about it. It's like, yeah, you know, like, I don't want to be defined by a number. Like, I'm not my age. I'm not my shoe size. I'm not any of these sizes. Or, like, the amount of followers that you have, none of that defines who we really are. These are just other things that, yeah, you know, we have in our lives. But um, how I change is, like, how I, I see myself. And I I see what I have to offer Instead of just seeing a reflection in the mirror and, you know, if I, you know, how much I weight or how old I am or if I have gray hair or not or if I have mm -hmm. wrinkles or not. And so by understanding that I have more to offer, I relate to people differently because I don't go like, oh, this person is going to, you know, just be around me because I'm pretty or it's not going to want to hang out with me because of, you know, because I know that the other stuff that I have to offer it, you know, my age doesn't matter. My, my weight doesn't matter. My physical things don't matter. And, and having a different relationship with myself, I'm able to have a healthier relationship with other people. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, going through such a, traumatizing kind of thing that you went through and then uh going through this just making this movie really can change a lot about a person in terms of like you know you sacrifice a lot you have to sit there and say okay i'm now going to dedicate myself to something completely new i'm going to dedicate mm -hmm. everything i'm going to spend several years on this which i didn't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but 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 you kept going and it reminds me of when my mom went back to school uh, she was, well, she was, you know, at home going crazy. I think at some point, cause she just waits for my dad to come home. She'll just like argue with him and, then, <laughs> you know, the, the, the day's over. And yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the day's over and she was 50 something. And she decided at that point that I had, I had gotten a doctorate, my brother, my sister, my dad as a couple, you know, so she's like, okay, well, I'm not going to sit here anymore. I'm going to go get a doctorate too, or get, you know, get, get another degree. So she goes back to school. And at first it's the most miserable thing ever because you're not used to this. You're kind of very comfortable in the land that you were living in and in the world that you were living in. And she goes and decides to completely change her life just by going back to school. She has to completely relearn everything and now become a student again. And she ended up pursuing this for years, trying to get her PhD, which she ultimately got. And then now she uses it to drive us crazy because she's a psychologist. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but, but I think, you know, you going through that whole process itself is amazing for people to see because you just did it and you had no idea. Not that you had no idea, but really you're entering a new world. And, yes. and at the same time, you're changing yourself. You're learning all, you know, these different things about, people that you never saw before you're asking everybody what their definition of beauty is and how they see the world and that's really what you're doing you're trying to see how everybody else sees the world and that i think is incredible and it's something that you fortunately went through but now everybody else can easily learn from it just by watching you know a, a very well-made documentary mm -hmm. 
So we were we were super excited to go to the opening of the documentary, oh uh, which was supposed to be like the I think the week all the COVID stuff actually happened. So um, our whole office was going to come. <laughs> they were all sweet. trying to yeah take off to come to see this uh, because I I've seen a lot of documentaries on nature and beauty, but I haven't seen anything like yours where you're really interviewing and talking to such different people because everybody uh kind of associates beauty with okay well look at that it's nice to look at or look at that it's nice to look at but yours you were talking about senses about thoughts about everything what were the what are the different realms that that you even went into other than just physically seeing something it's it's funny because i think i was so i was so lost you know, so I was, and I think those old wounds that I had, you know, while also modeling about, you know, the pressure and just people like, oh, you got to lose weight, you got to lie about your age and all that. I think that hurt me so much that probably even unconsciously, I was hoping that someone would define for me what beauty was. And then it's like, if it's not a yogi, maybe a plastic surgeon. If it's not a plastic surgeon, then maybe a philosopher. And if not that, then maybe a mathematician maybe a blind woman. It's just like on and on and on and on. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to have it as something more abstract. You know, I'm like, yeah. oh, I want to make this super abstract, you know, like make this super cool ideas with very different people. And then, you know, in the editing room, you know, my my other two um, editors, God bless them, um, they were like, Chris, you know, there's no story if, there, if, you, if you don't include your story. Like this is, this film is, through your lenses you know how you experience that and why it's like why someone that was for so long in this world of beauty and wants to explore that and why do you even care about this so it was more more like that and i think although you know everyone has a different a different journey has you know makes different choices cultures and all that is you know raised different ways i think we all have some existential questions. And I'm going to dare to say that I think beauty is like one of the questions that, you know, solves a lot of our own existential questions because that goes way, it's, it's just like one of those questions where it's like, oh, why we're here, you know, what we're doing, what we're supposed to do, where do we go after? Like one of those like big questions that's like, what is beauty? You know, is this something that I can touch, I can smell, mm-hmm. I can you know, I can hold, I can possess, I can buy, you know, and maybe none of them or maybe all of them were, you know, and I think as we evolve, our questions, our answers to that question is going to change. Mm-hmm. And know? not just the question, I think it also helps people live their lives a little bit differently. Um, you know, w- one thing I, I, I used to be with like a very miserable person and and she was always confused as to why why am i always just trying to be happy and i try to explain that well, it was crazy you have to explain this to somebody but <laughs> our our you know it's our instinct we want to be happy we want to be healthy we want to be relaxed uh it's kind of the the natural human response happiness is uh, one of those things and beauty is one of the things that brings us happiness like it gives us joy we we enjoy beautiful things however again you define it so you, I look at it as though you want to, it's really nice to open your mind and see all these different people and how they appreciate beauty because then you start to open your eyes to things that you're like, oh my God, that is beautiful. Oh my God, I didn't see it that way. That is a beautiful thing. And you start looking at this tree and the way it moves and I have a different appreciation for it because your understanding has changed. And mm-hmm. you start to open your eyes to more things that are beautiful to you. And I think at the end of you know, someone's life who has gone through all that, they have had happier moments throughout the day. So more happiness, less kind of tension, stress, and bad times. You just want the best good times. And um, yeah, yeah, I I think that's a big benefit of learning about beauty or seeing what other people see is that you can start seeing things you didn't see before. So you're not stuck in the same thing over and over again throughout the rest of your life. Yeah, and you're not a victim of things anymore. You know, because, you know, when you victimize yourself, it's like, hey, you know, like this happened to me. And of course, like for I think maybe initially the first phase, you're going to feel like a victim. But then is the first step. And then the next step is like, okay, so what can I do with this? 
projects. Like, how can I make this? How can I turn this into something good for me, something beautiful for me? How can this add to my life? It could mm-hmm. be a situation or a person or it doesn't matter. You know, yeah. and it's just like really everything is like a commitment. It's like, you know, like you, you look at, like you just said, you look at a plant or like a sunset or something. <laughs> it's like, this is beautiful. Yes, it is. But then sometimes we're so caught up in the things that we don't like in our lives that we don't even take the time to appreciate things. And again, like this is a good time as an example, like how many of us like dying to give our friends a hug or our parents a hug, you know, or, you know, brothers and sisters and something that maybe like before we were busy on our phones or like not really care. It's like, oh, I don't want to come over to my parents' house or have dinner again. And now like, wow, it's like really, it puts things in perspective. It's like, what is important to me? What, you know, like it's really because beauty the way that i see it today is like it's a higher quality and that goes like for the things that we love but that we love with our hearts not that we love like mm-hmm. even like the, the the word love like sometimes gets a little twisted like that we have to say like really love it's like really <laughs> beauty you know i think that like, we're so used to this like oh i love you but like i really love my mom but i love you <laughs> we have to make the separation um and it's just something that we're used to do you know we probably do it unconsciously, but it's like a higher, it's a higher frequency. You know, mm-hmm. it goes like with um, gratitude and love and, you know, connection. That's where, you know, beauty lies. Yeah. I, I, I think for me, the importance of beauty is I, I like to be happy. And beauty is one of the things, just like you're saying, with love and hugging and I hugged the first uh, the first person I've hugged in like five, six weeks yesterday. So it's like, you know, these little things that make you happy, you have, um, you have as you want to really have as many in your life as possible. And beauty is one of them. Love is one of them. That's the way I kind of categorize it. They're all positive things. Beauty is a positive thing. And yeah. the more you can enjoy beauty, the more appreciation you have for beauty, the more you understand what other people see as beautiful and you can maybe take some for yourself. Uh, the happier you're going to be. Uh, I always think about it. And I know a couple of people who like to throw temper tantrums and they, <laughs> uh, you know, the, so they, they get mad at something and they, you know, they have like a, they're at a store and somebody says something and they get mad at them. And I, I look at them like, well, I'm like what, what, what are you getting mad about? I'm like, what was the point of that? What did it achieve? Well, they did this. I'm like, it doesn't matter what they did. You chose to get mad. Your response was getting mad. They didn't make you mad. Nobody can make you do anything. You're the one who responded like that. You know, I could have somebody who goes and says something negative to me and I just don't care. I don't want to hear it. I don't, and I go on about my day. So obviously that person didn't make me mad. They said something stupid. Good for them. It triggered something inside of you. Yeah. Or they don't. But Or it, they it, don't. Or they yeah. try to. Or yeah. Like, yeah. They try to. And it's my choice how I want to respond to it or not. I I choose as much as possible not to respond to those things because I don't want to waste my time in the negative. Just because mm-hmm. I know I'm, I will have wasted my time. I get nothing out of it. I don't need revenge on this person <laughs> like for making me mad. I don't need them to feel bad for me to feel better. I just want them Is gone. Is power? Yeah, and I just want them gone. I would rather be <laughs> out, out of my life, whoever it was, whatever it was. And I just want to go back to me being happy and living like that. Unless it's going to have some kind of you know, ultimate consequence on my life. Why would I waste time? So a lot of people don't see that and they get mad all the time. I like seeing. And these are the people that don't see beauty in anything. They can. I mean, they they can, but they don't see enough of it. And so instead of, instead of becoming obsessed with the quest for beauty, the quest for happiness in their own lives, I'm saying they kind of live in a, just a very reactive life force. Like whatever happens around them, they just get into it. Somebody's angry around them, they get angry. Somebody, uh, you know, you're going through this coronavirus situation, everybody's freaking out, you freak out. Or you sit back and you say, okay, you know what? It's actually pretty nice that we have this time. I'm very grateful that I am not a part in a war. I'm very happy that like the reason I have to stay home in my lifetime is because people are trying to keep us safe. You know, you, you look at things differently. And I like this idea of the quest for beauty because it's one of those things that helps you know, open your eyes and reminds people hey this is how everybody else sees things you can choose to live like this person you can live like that person you can live like that person you could take a little bit from this one and steal as many ideas as you can from them and apply it to your own life yeah 
uh, get inspired. Yeah, and that's why it's nice because you you see things that you will not have otherwise seen from somebody else's eyes, and a lot of people have a, a very substantial difficulty seeing other people's perspectives. Very very intelligent people have huge difficulty seeing out of you know from someone else's eyes. Um, it's it's ego. very hard for them. It is ego. They kind of they see everything. They think everybody responds as they would, as though they would. Like so, they're like, okay. Well, this guy did this. Obviously, it's stupid. Everybody agrees that it's stupid. Instead of thinking, no, I think these five people over there would not think it's stupid <laughs> because they have a different mindset than I do. So a lot of people can't do that. And even and so with all that, I'm just saying it's it's really nice to have this journey that you went through that you can show everybody. Hey. This is how these all these people see beauty. And what you define as beauty yourself, yes, it's beautiful. But look at all these other things that other people think are beautiful and why. Try to see why. Try to understand people. Yeah. Through like I think everyone that watches the film, what I what I do is like I invite them to to find their own beauty. You know, it's not like, okay, open your mouth. Here's beauty. <laughs> it doesn't work yeah. like this. You know, yeah. they're gonna it's just like we have so many teachers and masters and people that inspire us, right? And then like those were my my teachers, my masters and people that I got really inspired by, mm -hmm. which I'm very grateful for for their time and for their knowledge that they share with me. And it's just like and then like and then you cook your own your own beauty. You know, it's like wow, you know, I and then you apply that to your life and it's gonna be different for everyone and everyone's gonna have a different experience. Yeah. So even in the plastic surgery world, the way that we treat people or patients depends on how we see them. And uh, people always ask me, well, I bet it's very hard to date you because you sit there staring at somebody's face and you tell them all these things that you want to do to them. And uh, I tell them, no, actually, that's not the case. I personally, if I like somebody if, or if even a person I just meet if they're pleasant and they're nice and they're just a beautiful person overall, I don't want to change them. So if I see somebody as beautiful, whether it's because of their personality, because of their glow, because of the way they interact with me, I have no desire to change them unless they have something like a fake nose, like they had a bad surgery or something that just stands out to me. But I really have no desire to change them. If they come to me asking, okay, break down my face and analyze me, then I do. Uh, other surgeons aren't necessarily like that. They kind of uh, see everybody as an equation and you go, you look at them and you analyze this you know, thing that you have and uh, you just use your scientific mind. For me, uh, realistically, if I see someone as beautiful, my, I don't have much of a job there to do. What am I supposed to do to this person? <laughs> like, Why do I have to make them look different? Uh, they look beautiful to me already. And this is, a, it's a nice part of the way that I do things, I think, because um, I tend to lead people down the wrong path less. So uh, because beauty for me, I leave it very open. I don't have like one definition of how I think somebody should look. I do have a very good understanding of why people are happier looking different ways. But when I see them and I'm analyzing them, I just think, mm, do I like your face or not? <laughs> and if I don't like their face, it's usually because there's a major imbalance something's fake or because they're a mean person. They're just mean, negative. And then uh, in that case, I either try to make them look happier or I just try to keep them out of my life, <laughs> which which <laughs> does happen. You see people with uh, you know a lot of negativity and you don't want to operate on them because uh, even if you can make them better and you can make them more beautiful in their world of what beauty is, uh, they're, they're never going to click with you. They're never going to vibe with you. And if that doesn't happen if you don't really get along with somebody as a friend you shouldn't have them as a patient because you have to have this very familiar family. It's trust you have to have a, yeah exactly yeah a familiar type of trust so you have to have that and if you don't have that you don't get into something serious like medicine with somebody you have to trust your doctor you have to and the doctor has to trust that the patient is going to do what they say understand what they say and uh not like lose sight of everything so um Either way, in the in the plastic surgery world, the definitions of what is beautiful or what makes beauty are all over the place. And in the end, I try to explain to people: if you are a beautiful person, if you look beautiful, if you're glowing, don't change anything if you don't need to. You look great. Um, 
if you are fixated on fix uh, changing something, I'm really good at it. I'll help you try to you know, achieve what you want, staying within the constraints that I have. And this is what I was talking yesterday uh, with Christian about, is that our whole job here is to make people happy. And to make people happy, you have to understand them. You have to understand beauty. You have to understand what they see as beautiful. And you have to really have that be your priority is to make them happy because you can give somebody the perfect surgery and they might still not be happy. So the priority always becomes number one, your first priority should be making people happy. Your second priority should be giving them the perfect surgery because the perfect right. surgery is not always going to get you to the, to the happiness. You have to be able to read people and understand people. But how many times do you get, and now I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. Like how many times do you, do you get like people coming to you and they think that that one thing is going to make them happy. And then two months later, they're back again. Oh, but then there's something else. And then there's something else. And then there's, you know, yeah. this never ending, you know, quest for what they think is perfection. And then once all that is done, then they start it all over again. Yeah. And th that's when it's like, okay, like, are you, you know, like, are you really trying to find happiness? You know, yeah, well, that well, way. So, you know, some people, um, it, it's not just about happiness. Some people have to get rid of some kind of obsession. So they, they have something in their mind that bothers them. It's like a dirty part of your house and you look at it and it just keeps bothering you. Keeps bothering. You have to go clean it just to forget about it. Uh, facial plastic surgery, a lot of the time is like that. Like they have something they keep seeing in photos and like it bothers me, it bothers me. And they just kind of weigh the risk and the benefit. And they're like, okay, well, it's going to take me like three weeks to go through this. So I never have to think about it again. I'll go do it. The problem becomes you do that. And then there's the next one and there's the next one and there's the next one. And there's the next one. So uh, most people aren't like that. Most people just have a couple of things that they want to do. And then they maintain throughout their lives, just like wearing makeup and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do have some where you see that they're going down the wrong path. And I see it now because I've seen so many people and they keep chasing looking beautiful, keep chasing, looking like other people and what they see in social media. If I catch them early, which is rare, okay, if I catch them early, it's beautiful because I, I see it right away. I see what's happening. And I could just be with two small procedures that they're talking about, but I can understand just by talking to them that this won't be the end of it. They're going to start with these two things. It's probably not going to make them happy. They're looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> uh, so right. I have a, so that turns from a 15 minute consultation to a one hour. And mm -hmm. that's me trying to save this person for the rest of their lives from looking like everybody else. Most of the time uh, I see people, they've already gone down that path. And in Los Angeles the, or in the U.S. now, the most common thing that you see is people chasing aging on their face. And they keep just making it bigger and bigger and bigger. And they end up with these overinflated, overfilled faces. So um, at that point, it's very hard to reverse somebody back to normal, but they've, that's what happens when you chase things too much. There's not going to be anything natural or nice left to do. And at some point you're just going to be adding on without any benefit. And that's really what happens to everybody. So yesterday I had a consultation with like the most beautiful girl, gorgeous from uh, across the country. And um, I'm looking at her the whole time thinking like, you know what, if I met you on the street, I would just think like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. I wouldn't want to touch you or do anything. And, you know, we started talking about some uh, asymmetries and imbalance and all these different things. And my whole goal this time uh, that I was spending with her on the phone, it's I'm, I'm a surgeon, you know, so I'm supposed to advise people do surgery or don't do surgery. Uh, that's my job. But realistically, I don't do that. Realistically, I sit there and I help them. I try to give them a new pair of goggles, a new pair of glasses, and I want them to understand what I understand and why. Why do I keep people safe? How do I predict how they're going to age? How do I keep people looking good and natural this whole time? So I try to have her see things from my standpoint. That takes about 45 minutes. So I sat there instead of just saying, okay, don't do it. Because I don't want her to go to the next surgeon and the next surgeon says do it. I want her to understand what I see. So I sat there for 45 minutes, talked to her. She was very pleasant. And I kept explaining to her the difference between asymmetry and balance, flow, and these kind of things. The benefit versus what you imagine would be benefit with changing your eyes so um fortunately she's one who's very intelligent and she saw what i saw at the end she goes yeah you know what you're right i am very beautiful <laughs> and, oh, wow. and, and and no and, and she knew that i mean but but 
still very beautiful people still want improvements. Everybody wants to be better. And it could be better at life, could be better at skiing. It could be better in your appearance. Everybody wants to improve. And I hold, I never hold that against anybody. It's not a sickness or an illness. It's part of human nature is trying to improve. And part of that We're is here to evolve. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And part of that's that is that's gonna make them feel better about themselves. Yeah. Yeah, part of that is appearance and how other people interact with you and perceive you. And it does change your life in different ways. But uh, she was very clearly listening to what I said towards the end. And regardless of what she had heard from the other five, six doctors she talked to, she said, okay, now I get it. And she actually gave me in the end the sequence of what she would do and not do and why. And, oh, wow. you know, th th that for me is amazing in helping somebody see things the way I do. Because again, I see, I'm very simple. I'm not one of these creative surgeons who looks at everybody's faces and I'm like, I can do this. I'm an artist. I can, you know, <laughs> can I, it, I, it, I'm not like that. I like to like look at people and if they look good, I'm like, good, good for you. Keep looking good. You're beautiful. Why yeah, are you, you happy? <laughs> That's what yeah. matters. Yeah. I'm like, why would you want to do anything? If they come and they're unhappy, then I have to figure out, okay, can I do anything that's going to change that? Can I make you happy? And uh, part of that is going to be operating. Part of that is just talking to them. And Part of my, you know, sometimes I have consultations where I tell people not to do anything. And I had somebody at the end of it, at one of them say, hey, uh, so thanks for wasting my time. Uh, can I, uh, can I have a, a refund? And she was so like, I, I didn't like her. She was just not a nice person. Mm -hmm. And normally, like, I don't care about a refund for a consultation. It's not a big deal. It's, it's offensive that somebody would ask because they think that your opinion is not what they came for. Like they're, that you're not. Or that your time <laughs> is not valuable. Yeah. But then again, I looked at her and I'm like, okay, well, if she's negative and mean enough to think that I'm not worth anything. Fine. I don't want her in my life. So the easiest right. way, instead of sitting there talking to somebody who I would view as not nice, not ever going to be nice, never going to be understanding. It would take because me a long time. To. Yeah. It would take me a long time to, really convince this person that, Hey, listen, my time is worth that. You go to the doctor to get a checkup. They don't have to give you heart surgery. They check you up They make sure you're okay. They send, <laughs> they you, send you home. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Uh, in those cases though, I look at my life and I'm like, you know what? I'm very happy. She asked for that. I don't want her in my life. This is a very quick, easy way to get her out. And I don't have to sit here talking one minute more now to help her. She's mean. Right. So. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to have to start charging her. For <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So in those cases, yeah, I, I told her, you know, she, she didn't understand that part of the importance of going through plastic surgery consults is learning what not to do. <laughs> like, realistically, unless you want to look fake and weird like everybody else. So, um, <laughs> But I, I like those moments because I, I now see it clearly and I don't get offended um like i used to I used to be a little touchy about it because i'm like dude i sat here and i like changed your life really <laughs> you don't appreciate yeah welcome that. um instead i see it now as a, a nice escape route for me and so i say okay here you go here's your money back i'll also pay for your gas uh oh, and your parking you lot here. yeah yeah just never come back and never tell your friends that you met me because i don't want people like you here ouch yeah and it's true so that, that was like your conscious choice not to get offended is like don't take things personally that was like her agenda with herself not with you because like sometimes we take on other people but the real problem is like how we feel inside so she was probably poor thing feeling so miserable and then she's like you know like how maybe like because she doesn't know how to deal with herself nor does she want to yeah. it's easier to just get off on someone else it's like oh like i want my money back i want this yeah. back and Okay. Yeah. And I used to see things differently. I used to see it where I would get offended. I'm like, I spent all my time. I've been training all these years to be able to tell you this stuff. Now I, <laughs> now I see it differently. Now I see it like, wow. I'm like, if I didn't believe there was a God, there's a God. <laughs> he's watching out for me. And he's, <laughs> he's showing me. He that just you're saved your ass. He just saved my ass. He's showing me that you are crazy and you need to get the fuck out of my office. So we don't interact anymore. And right. yeah, thank you. And go away. And you know, this is a lot of people get offended. How can a doctor say this? How can a doctor think this? I'm a normal human being and there I'm in this job because I enjoy it. I don't have to be a doctor. I can do whatever I want. I choose to be a doctor because I like people and I like to help people. The people that I'm helping have to like me. If they don't, why would I want them around me? I'm not going to sit there helping somebody who doesn't like me. It's very difficult to help somebody who doesn't like you. They don't trust you. They don't they, listen they don't, to you. They don't listen. They, they doubt you. Um, 
so it's it's very impractical to try to deal with somebody who doesn't like you. It's very different if you're an ER doctor. I'm in an elective world. You're visiting me by choice. We don't have to treat something emergently. We have time to think about it. We have time to see if we click. We have time to see if you understand the things that I do. For emergency doctors, they have no choice. You come in, doesn't matter who likes you. They're there to save your life. They're there to make sure you're safe. Who cares if you like what they're doing or not? They're going to do it for you. You're going to say thank you. Your life was saved and you leave. Uh, in my line of work, it's very, very different. So, um, yeah. But I do, uh, either way, appreciate things a lot differently now than I did years ago. And it is somehow just having the ability to step back and see things differently. And I do see even this. I do see the beauty in this stuff now. I was <laughs> going to say that. See, I there's, do. Beauty, there's beauty in the situations too. Yeah, I had a doctor I talked to once. I, you know, I get extorted every once in a while because extortion is part of plastic surgery. And uh, he told me that the best money he's ever spent is paying people to go away. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought about it. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, you did all this work. You said exactly what you were going to do. You did exactly what you said you were going to do. It came out exactly like you said it was going to come out. But then you have to see, okay, how much do I want to deal with this psycho, this crazy person? And I see it so beautifully now where I look at it and I'm like, you know what? He's right. And some people now I just have to brush off and say, okay, it's not going to bother me. Some people I say, okay, get out of my life this way. Like it's becoming a, a plastic surgeon. No, nobody ever told you this stuff's going to happen, but you, you have to accept it. You've kind of asked for it, you know, to be a plastic surgeon and do what I do. I have to accept that I have to deal with these things and deal with people who act completely differently than I do and see things differently than I do and uh, don't have the same sentiment towards other humans as I do. Yeah, because those things for them is probably like something that causes them so much, you know, anxiety and so much suffering. It's like, you know, they really, really, they decided to really hate that one part of their bodies or that one thing that is, it, it gets so sensitive to even talk about it. So I think like your job is really, you know, to touch the the the, the dirty you know, patch of their house. It's like, okay, we're going to walk through this dirty patch and I'm going <laughs> to show you that it's not as bad as you thought it was. Yeah. And then, but they, they are already very sensitive about it. So like, I, I would imagine how sensitive it is to talk about these things with people. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very emotional field, classic surgery. Yeah. Which, it's uh, a little bit of te therapy, right? Because you talk is. about something that's sensitive to them. It is. And that's, I love that about it. I also don't love that about it. I love, you know, <laughs> I, I, I do love getting to know people. I love helping people. I love, uh, you know, helping them see things. And it's, you know, so, sometimes, and when they respond positively, it changes my life. Like every day, I'm so happy when they say thank you and they say thank you. Um, if they're coming back negatively, then I ask myself, why don't I just go into like real estate or business or <laughs> something else where you don't have to listen to people. You don't have to hear them complain to you. But I love what I do so much. So, you know, you, you always see when people complain and people uh, are hurting, it's, it's, you know, it's because they need your help. It's because they, they want help. It's not that they're mad at you or they hate you. So um, a lot of times I have to remind myself of that. They're being mean to me because they're struggling. It's not that they want to be mean to me, <laughs> but they're just and this struggling. Is absolutely true. And, yeah. And, but, but it's hard when it happens day after day. Some days, some weeks, it's like three weeks in a row you're getting hit. And you really have to just breathe when you come home and breathe and just say, okay, they're all attacking right now. It's just because it's Mercury retrograde. Oh my happening. God. Yeah. There's it's, always an excuse. It's, yeah. it, it's going to pass. And then three weeks later, the same exact people are sending you letters. Like, I love you. Thank you so much. They're sending you gifts. And, and then at that point, I'm like, no, no, stop sending me gifts. I'm like, I, I, <laughs> I feel uncomfortable getting thank yous from things too. So yeah, uh, I heard like from my, so, you know, when I was going through my, my mess, um, the attorney that went to court with me and I was freaking out. And then he said something that I'll never forget. Um, we were waiting for the judge and then he's like, you know, he grabbed my arm and then he looked at me and then he's like, remember, hurt people, hurt people. So that's exactly what these people are doing. You know, like they are hurt because of that one thing or a few things that they're, they really think that they're going to be a better human being if they change that so it's very very sensitive to them and then they come to you and then you say something different that they think or that they thought that you're gonna say and then you know they 
first person that's in front of me that, you know, talks about my problem is going <laughs> to, ah. Yeah. So that's yeah, and, probably what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, for, for everybody who wants to get somebody else's perspective, I think this is a very nice movie to see, to get that because you're looking at all very positive, beautiful thing. Um, so I would say everybody watch it when it comes out. I don't know when it's coming out. When, what, what's your plan now that you're, you don't have, you haven't had your premiere. You haven't, and we've been waiting so long for this. No, tell me about it. Yeah. That was, that was very hard. Um, it was another lesson of, you know, just accepting things as they are. So yeah, having to postpone the premiere was, um, so Sorry. I don't, I don't know. We're going to wait to see, you know, once people start to come out of their cocoons and because we need to see how people feel and then is it safe to host people inside of like a right. theater. So, so how can people see clips now before, before the whole thing is released? Um, so what I did, um, I created this YouTube channel, Quest for Beauty, and I, I want the channel to be a continuation of the, the conversation about beauty and self-love because it really boils down to self-love because once you have that, and then you're going to see beauty in everything and everyone. It might not be pleasant, but then, you know, you're going to, you're going to understand that that's something that might advance you somehow, you know, and it's going to bring you joy in the future, not immediately sometimes. And that's okay too. But yeah, so people can go to my YouTube channel and watch a little bit. I have one interview so far every Wednesday at 3 p.m. LA time. We have a new episode coming out. So, wait, so are these new interviews or is this part of the Quest for Beauty movie? No, these are new interviews. So this is like the, it's a, like a, a continuation of the film, of the conversation of the film. So Quest for Beauty is done. Okay. You know, but, you know, it's like not something like, okay, you know, I have crossed through the Holy Land. You know, it's an <laughs> everyday work. And even it's good for me, it's like, if I stop, you know, I have my days where it's like, you know, I don't see beauty anywhere. <laughs> and then yeah. I have to remind myself, it's like, okay, breathe, and then let's start over. And, you know, just this conversation about how to keep, you know, being positive and how to, you know, don't take things personally. And so I'm, I'm continuing the conversation about the yeah. subject on my YouTube channel. Awesome. Yeah. So for everybody, you know, I suggest you see it. I I, uh, I always advise people who are like lost in the world never go searching for yourself. There's like an old saying: uh, he he who goes on a search to find himself will only find himself lost. So <laughs> it's true. So so you never 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 go on that search. But um, you know, I would try to expand your knowledge as much as possible and just see things how other people see things and keep adding on to it. Never search to find yourself. Just you're there. You are who you are. You're alive. And keep it simple. But watch and read things and spend time with people trying to understand them. And uh, I, I love, you know, the idea of your movie because it's going to be a very high yield way for somebody in a couple of hours. Uh, I don't know how long it is uh, fully, but um, in, in, one, in a, hour. Uh, one hour. One hour. Perfect. So in that time to learn is so much. Is it being a nutshell? This is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's very high yield. You get to see just very quickly. Like, okay, oh my god, I didn't see these things before. And the more you open your eyes to different things, the more you can appreciate, like in your in your Absolutely. own life. You don't, yeah, you don't have to go searching to change yourself. Just small improvements and little things like this, I think, help a lot. Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So everybody who wants, you can follow Chris. Uh, she has her own personal one, but she also has the Quest for Beauty uh, Instagram and YouTube. So. We'll start watching all those lovely uh, YouTube videos that you're going to put out as your as your quest for beauty continues past the the movie. It's an eternal quest, right? It's like yeah. it's a little bit every day. Yeah, and it's because there's no one answer. There's no one definition, and definitely everybody can benefit from learning from everybody else. So um, even if we don't agree, it's okay. Yeah, I yeah. agree. <laughs> I agree with that. We don't have to agree with anyone. Yeah, perfect. All right, well, Chris. Thank you so much. You're Thank the best. Thank you, man. It was nice to see you. It's been a long time. Yeah, muito prazer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everybody else, you can look out for this podcast coming up uh, in the next week or two on, on YouTube. All right, take care. Bye-bye.